Welcome back to Shine Dubai. Our next guest and inspirational woman is French-Italian photographer Matilde Gattoni. Now, throughout her career, which has spanned 15 years, 35 countries and four continents, she's had the unique opportunity to encounter thousands of women all over the world. From explorers in Dubai to war refugees in Africa and tsunami survivors in Indonesia, the exhibition titled Her is a tribute to their bravery and capacity to deal with challenges. So Matilde, it's such a pleasure to have you with us on the show. Now, your collection of extraordinary photographs is titled Her. Now, tell me a little bit about your journey and why you felt it was so important to document women all around the world in situations of adversity. Uh, well, I've been a photographer, a photojournalist for 15 years now, and I've traveled uh, almost in 40 countries. And uh, my reportage has never been focused specifically on women, but I have realized that the main heroes, the main characters of my stories are often women that have gone through um, hardships, uh, that are living a very difficult life for different reasons. And uh, they're still fighting and they're still smiling. So I get very emotional, sorry, when I speak about uh, them, but I'm, I'm very attached to this, uh, these women. I have a lot of um, admiration for them because they're extremely strong. Uh, wherever they, uh, they come from, uh, whatever they've been through life, uh, they're extremely um, resilient. So really this is a celebration of the female spirit, of the female character. Absolutely, it is. Now this 15 year journey, tell me where has it taken you throughout the world? Well, uh, it has taken me, at the, um, for example, at the border between uh, Kenya and Somalia. Uh, I've worked uh, three weeks uh, um, in, the, in a, refugee called Dada, a refugee camp called Dadaab. It's actually the largest refugee camp in the world. And uh, there's been a, a war going in Somalia for more than 20 years. So a lot of refugees have escaped the country and they are um, surviving. Uh, what drives you personally as a woman to go to these areas? I mean, as a photojournalist, you know, you could go and photo the ballet, do you know what I mean? You don't have to do this. Why do you feel it's so important for you to document these women? To give them a voice. Uh, I think that uh, women tend to be more comfortable with other women, uh, especially when they are in, um, you know, in their house. For example, in, in many countries uh, in Africa or in Southeast Asia, women are not very comfortable if a man enters their house. So uh, you end up uh, living extraordinary moments because they let you into their house, they're happy, they're curious, they start looking at you, they start touching you. and. So there's a connection between women that a man will never be able to have with, with these women. Taking up that point, how difficult is it photographing women in pain from your point of view and of course from their point of view? I know, you know, if I'm having a bad day, I don't want my photo taken, but these women are, you know, it's domestic yes. abuse, it's refugees, yes. you know, how difficult is that process of allowing? Um, it's very, very difficult, uh, I guess for them, in one way it's difficult and in the other way they're happy that somebody is going to tell their stories to the world. Right. Uh, for me as a person uh, it's very difficult. The camera helps you a lot to put a filter you know, between the person and yourself. Even though sometimes you put down the camera and you, you can help them or you can touch them, caress them, you know, make them feel comfortable. Now, during this extraordinary 15-year journey, I mean, was there a particular place or was there even a particular woman who, obviously, they all touched your heart, yes. but was there any, any place or any person in particular where you just, you know, felt so deeply? Yes, so many. <laughs> <laughs> Can you think of one or two? Yes, absolutely. Uh, there is actually, um, it's a woman uh, named Mai Kang. She's from Lao. Uh, she's 30 years old, so her picture is behind us. And um, I went to Laos a few months back to cover the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War. There's, uh, during the Vietnam War, there, the US bombarded Laos for nine years. It's called the Secret War. Nobody knew about that. It was a CIA war. 
and uh, a lot of people died. You know, they bombarded. It's the most bombarded country in the world, actually. So we met uh, Mike Kang, who uh, whose uh, husband committed suicide because he had uh, hit a cluster bomb while he was uh, cutting a tree. So yeah. Take me through, um, in terms of the photos that we've got in the exhibition today, and um, the different locations, so the different countries that you went to. Mm -hmm. uh, well, um, I've been to uh, I've been to Madagascar. Uh, well, we can start from Africa. I've been to uh, Niger uh, to document the uh, the Tuareg uh, community, what it means to be a Tuareg in uh, in. In, I mean nowadays, uh, if, it, if the Tuaregs still have an identity. Yeah. I've been to, uh, as I told you, the Kenya-Somalia border uh, to work on the refugees, Somali refugees escaping from war. And then um, I've been to um, Lao. I think that um, all the stories are difficult because all of these things, uh, war, uh, sexual abuse, uh, or um, land grabbing, all of these things are, it's like removing parts of your soul, you know, so they are all parts of your identity. So it's destroying someone's identity, whether you remove their land, you, re you, you remove the only thing they have, they're going to leave to their kids. For example, in Cambodia, a lot of multinational companies are destroying the land. Uh, they're they're just uh, you know uh, removing the land from from the uh, from the farmers in order to uh, build huge um, sugar plantations, industrial sugar plantations. So these people end up having absolutely nothing. And the thing that bothers them the most is that they cannot leave anything to their children once they're left, once they're gone. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that's the thing, the feel rouge that you have between all these pictures, you know, something that has been taken away from you and it was part of your identity, of your family, of your culture, of whatever is So that is you. the link between all the women that you photograph. How important do you think it is for artists to have a social conscience? Well, I could never be anything else than a photojournalist. For me, I'm not interested in fashion photography. I'm, not, I'm interested in the world. Yeah. And photography is just a medium for me. Sure. That's it. But it's, um, I'm really interested in people. How do you think that um, women support each other? You know, when you see these women in horrific situations, what is the special bond between women that enables them to get over these? things that happen? Yeah, I, I, I think they are, I think they're very supportive towards each mm -hmm. other, much more than men, because, because they are considered weaker in right. the society, in the community in general. I'm not talking just about Southeast Asia, but even in Europe, for example. You always have to fight harder, you know. I mean, you're a woman, you know exactly. what it means. You have to fight harder to get what you want in life. Well, that's what this program is, is a lot of about, equality and, you know, everybody finding their place and, and empowerment to men as well, but to allow everybody to have a voice and a absolutely, place Absolutely, absolutely. I'm, I'm not a feminist at all. No, I right. want everybody to have their own place, you know. I'm not saying that men should be well, humanists, you know what I mean? Exactly, yeah. exactly, absolutely. Finally, tell me, um, what would you say is the one um, or just the, the most important character traits that all these women that you've documented have? What is it that they have? Resilience. Yeah. And I think that can probably change a lot of lives. Matilda, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. So that brings us to the end of our first edition of Shine Dubai, discovering inspiring and empowering women in the community. Now, if you have an incredible story, or if you'd like to nominate a woman who is influencing society, please get in touch. You can contact us at news at city7tv.com. Thanks for watching and bye for now.